Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. Thank you so much for subscribing and that's the first thing that I wanted to talk about. Uh, I didn't get a chance to talk about this in my last video because I recorded the audio um, before the crazy influx of new subscribers. So I just wanted to say that I'm super happy about all of you deciding to join in on this little community that we have here. And I really didn't expect for my channel to grow so quickly. So I'm, I'm pretty shocked, but very happy about it. And I am going through all the comments and replying to as many as I can uh, whenever I have time. So I just wanted to talk about a couple of things before I jump into the process of this drawing that you see in front of you. The first thing is obviously to thank you all for joining on my channel. And the second thing is I've noticed I've been getting quite a few pre-orders for my art book called Milk of Melancholy and I also wanted to thank you guys so much for that. Your support means a lot to me and I just wanted to let you all know that there has been a bit of a delay in the production of the art book because um, the factory has like the the manufacturer that I'm, I've been in contact with they've delayed the production of the proofs unfortunately they couldn't finish them before the Chinese holidays and then the Chinese holidays were extended by at least 10 days, I think. But last thing I heard from them is that they're supposed to begin production and stuff today. So I'll just be hearing back from them hopefully soon. And I will keep you guys updated on all of that stuff. It really sucks that things had to get delayed. But unfortunately, that's just how it goes because there's so many unpredictable things that can happen along the way and it is quite a long process but I will keep everybody up to date with everything that's going on so yeah again thank you so much for supporting me and pre-ordering my art book so in this video I wanted to show you guys the process for this one drawing that I did for Inktober 2019 and I, I noticed that a couple of you wanted, or I guess quite a few people asked about the materials and that I should include like a list of materials and maybe talk about them. So I decided to do that for this video. Thankfully, I still remember everything that I used for this. You'd be surprised how chaotic the process can get sometimes. But the main material I used for this is these two inks. They are Windsor and Newton, as you can see, a Violet and Scarlet. Um, so this one's quite pink and this one is like a more bluish purple. So to get this lilac lavender type of color, I mixed these two together and I diluted it quite a bit. And to dilute my inks, I usually put them into like a little bottle so that I don't have to do it again. You know, this is still the same exact stuff that I diluted like months ago. So these are surprisingly, what's the word? Useful, I guess? Handy? I don't know. Pretty sure I got them at like a dollar store, though, so they should be easy to find. But this is what I use and I did the sketch with the trusty Colorase pencil, this time in lavender. Oh, you can't really see it. Whatever. It's, I mean, it's just a pencil. Yeah, lavender is the color, I'm pretty sure. Sorry about the lighting. It kind of looks really dark, but it is like a nice, nice light lavender color. And I use these two pens for the inking or the line work. And these are just some really standard Stadler ballpoint pens. I believe they came in a set with a bunch of other colors and they're quite thick. I'm not like a huge fan of them. I'm just using them because I have them, but I, I might shop around for thinner ballpoint pens in the future. But the good thing about them is that they're super cheap and probably very easy to find. I think I got them at like Staples or something. And the last uh, material for this drawing was this highlighter this pink highlighter that i got from muji it's uh i mean it's pretty standard not a whole lot to say about it it's kind of cool that it's got the, like the liquid that you can see inside which is why i got roped into buying it <laughs> just because it looks really cool but it is pretty standard and it kind of you can push it into like get the liquid to come out 
it's been going strong i think i got it like a few years ago but yeah so these are the materials so i'm just gonna jump into the process actually i t completely forgot about the brushes so i'm just gonna go over that real quick here are the brushes that i use there are the Betty hayways brushes that i've been mentioning in my previous videos i've been using them for all my painting recently oh my god this camera just keeps focusing on the background <laughs> here we go right so this is a brand new set um and i will actually be doing a giveaway pretty soon probably on my instagram if anybody doesn't know my instagram it is cosmic spectrum the same as the youtube name so if you just look that up it should be pretty easy to find and yeah i absolutely love these brushes oops they're beautiful and as you can see they actually match the color scheme which is hilarious but yes i if you guys are interested in purchasing these i will be including a link in the description and i also wanted to let you know that i do get a small commission if you use the link so yes without further ado on to the process of this drawing so here's the close-up of the scanned drawing after I edited it. Usually I like to scan in the drawing and add some white highlights that are very detailed that I couldn't get in on paper because I usually kind of tend to draw a little bit small. So there's that. Unfortunately, the highlighter really doesn't scan in too well, but it's I, I guess it's just impossible to get it in a scan, which kind of sucks. But you were able to see how... It glows on camera, thankfully. So as you can see here, I have the little thumbnail that I drew in my sketchbook right there as I'm sketching the final drawing. I didn't really spend too much time thinking about it. I remember really liking the facial expression in the thumbnail, So, and I really wasn't able to capture it in the same way. In fact, the drawing, as it turned out in the end, was pretty different from what I had in mind initially and had a completely different vibe, but since it was Inktober and I really didn't have much time, I remember having a lot of freelance stuff going on and my window of time for Inktober was usually like uh, two hours or so that I could spare every day and I'm actually pretty shocked that I was able to do it so many days in a row, but regardless, as you will be able to see, I was having a really hard time with the face and usually having a hard time with the face is like, I just can't quite capture the expression that I was initially going for. And then I start redrawing each feature to see if I can get closer to it. And sometimes it takes forever, honestly. So uh, as you can see, as usual, I sketched, I, I put down a bunch of light lines for the overall composition. So I just know where the large elements will be like the large shapes of hair and the outline like a rough outline of her hands and after i was finished putting all those things in place i just focused on the face this is pretty much the part where i was getting super frustrated and i just could not get it right and looking back on it, it's pretty funny because it's been a few months and i just remember it being so aggravating <laughs> and god this is so funny but I don't know if you guys have ever read Chuck Palahniuk, but at this stage, this face has an uncanny resemblance to the cover of his book called Haunted. God, it was so funny. I remember when I was reading this like a long time ago, I didn't realize that it was a glow-in-the-dark cover, so I was like reading it before bed. So I turn off all the lights. And then I roll, like I, I glance over and I see this face peeking out of from under the blanket and it scared the shit out of me. It was the funniest thing. Anyways, back to the process. So I pretty much just kind of gave up on the face because I could not get it right. And I actually do this pretty often when I'm doing like one-off drawings like this or something in my sketchbook. I don't have enough patience to sit with it long enough to get it to look exactly how I want it to, which is a shame. And actually, I kind of wanted to bring back the, uh, the topic of references. Uh, I kind of touched on this a little bit on in my previous video where I was talking about style. I don't know why exactly I've always been very careful about using references. And I don't know, I just remember growing up and always having 
this feeling like using a reference was cheating. I don't really remember where this came from exactly, but it's a really terrible mindset to have. Um, it's like the exact opposite of tracing or like using references too closely or just straight up copying somebody else's artwork. The right thing honestly is to find some sort of balance where you use a lot of references to inform your work and it definitely will improve it by a ton and I recommend everybody do this. Obviously you can't talk about this too much because I'm, I'm still trying to fight through the never use a reference mindset. <laughs> I obviously use them sometimes when I'm drawing something that I have no idea what it looks like but usually I'm just really resistant to them and I want to start incorporating references more often into my work. One thing I will say though is the only silver, silver lining in my anti-reference situation is that I do think it helped me be able to draw a lot faster just because I kind of forced myself to figure things out without a reference for so long that I do complete sketches quite a bit faster than... I, I don't know. It, it's hard to say, obviously, because I don't really have anything to compare it to, but I do notice that when I sit down and I have to gather a bunch of references, it's actually a huge time sink, but it is necessary, and I'm not sure how much of the process, uh, how much time it saves later on in the process. It's all debatable, but anyway, the point to take away from this is that references are good, and they should definitely be used, and that is advice to me more so than to anyone else. <laughs> yes, so, back to the process. As you can see at this point, I'm finishing up the sketch by putting on all the little details, like the flowers. By little details, I mean overall elements. <laughs> I'm pretty bad at wording this. I'm, I'm, I'm just trying to sync up the audio to the video because I already edited the video. I still don't know if that's the best process of going about things, but it seemed to be a little bit easier than recording the audio first. I don't know, maybe I'll try to do that next time. I'm just finishing up the sketch and ready to move on to the inks at this point. I roughly indicated most of the shapes and I didn't go into too much detail because I usually leave that for the line work. Okay, so as you can see here, I already have some diluted inks prepared. I usually pre-mix three different shades. So the darkest one, which is hardly diluted at all, and two, like a medium tone and a light tone so that I don't have to mix them every time. It makes the process a lot faster for me. As you can see, I went back and drew in the two little ear accessories, like the earrings, hoops, whatever you want to call them. I did this mainly to just balance out the piece. I thought that area, that particular area could use a little bit more detail, so that's what I did. I wanted to show you the real-time recording, but obviously that would be way too lengthy. So I chopped it down to little parts where you can see how I use the brush in real time. I didn't speed up a lot of this process going forward in this video, so just a warning. Anyway, uh, I usually have a little piece of paper to the side where I can test the tone of the ink before I put it down on the paper. I usually go in very carefully to make sure that I'm not putting down too much ink right off the bat so that if, if I make a mistake, making a mistake with dark ink has way more consequences than it does with light ink because obviously you can't remove it. But when you go in with light ink, if you go fast enough, you can usually remove a lot of it with a paper towel. So I do that. I usually keep a couple of paper towels around, some for removing excess ink from the paintbrush and one that I can reach very quickly to remove ink from the paper before it has a chance to dry. I actually use this method quite a bit for blending. I don't know if it's a common thing to do, but it really works for me. I used to also use my finger to blend, which can be a little messy. I try not to do that anymore, but sometimes if I do it quickly, it's just like a quick hack. Here I'm just putting down a wash of the ink because I wanted to get a better idea of what the lighting situation will be. Basically what I had in mind was just 
a darker background and the face being the focal point so the most contrast on the face which is a pretty standard thing for me to do as you can see after i finished with the first wash it, the whole image became a lot clearer so i went in for a second pass with a slightly darker solution just mainly putting it around the face now and being a little more attentive to detail. So in the second pass, I'm mainly just going over all the facial features and just elaborating on them, uh, strengthening the shadows, adding more depth, etc. It's pretty self-explanatory, there isn't a whole lot to explain here. And for the next part, I actually forgot to mention that I did go in with uh, a nib, I think it was the G, G nib. I used it at first for basically eyeliner and the eyeshadows, <laughs> but uh, I did switch to a ballpoint pen right after because I found that the nib was a little bit annoying to deal with and sometimes it scratches the paper. So I decided to leave it alone and move on to the pen, which is the reason why I prefer a ballpoint pen is because it's very very easy to control it doesn't bleed there is no chance to mess up the drawing and it behaves a little bit like a pencil especially if it's thicker so you can get wispy lines depending on how much pressure you put on the pen so it's definitely a medium I like a lot and I'm, I'm surprised that artists don't use it more often uh, and I'm surprised that I actually used uh, Micron inking pens for years and years before I started using ballpoint pens more regularly. Although, it is, it, I guess it is a different effect, so Micron pens have their place. So as you can see here, I'm just elaborating on the detail in the branches. And a lot of this I just kind of leave up to the moment. I like to make spontaneous decisions because it makes the drawing more fun and plus these were for Inktober so I didn't have a whole lot of time to plan and I really just wanted to kind of zone out and unwind at the end of the day or I guess this particular piece I was doing in the middle of the day but a lot of the later on Inktober pieces I just did at the very end of the day after I was done with all my freelance stuff. As you can see here, I skipped quite a bit of the process because it can get very repetitive and there isn't a whole lot to say about it. I just kept further defining the shapes and adding darker, uh, adding darks with the ballpoint pen. And then here I'm just going over the outline with a highlighter. At first I kind of just wanted to do an outline, but then I decided to also fill it in because I thought it would create a more stark effect. I really like the contrast of the two colors. As you can see, most of the drawing is monochromatic, but the contrast really makes it pop, especially in the eyes. I really love simple, super simple color schemes. They're definitely the easiest, and like I said, for this particular piece, I just wanted to relax and unwind. And it's actually quite a bit bigger than my usual drawings and one of the things for this inktober that i was trying to do is work on bigger paper i didn't do it consistently and it's kind of something that i came to later but i did want to talk a little bit about how one of the biggest epiphanies i had during this uh, last year's inktober is that drawing bigger is actually a lot easier i think and creates like a more interesting result unfortunately this was an epiphany to me hilariously enough even though i've been drawing for so long i don't really know why i always gravitated towards smaller drawings but i don't know maybe it's because i, I like tiny sketchbooks and you know like little stickers and things like that it, there's something more cozy about small drawings i guess but yeah, uh, I think I really want to try drawing bigger, maybe even larger than <laughs> 9 by 12 which is unfortunately probably the biggest size that I've ever really worked at, which is probably hilarious to a lot of people because it's so small still. But yeah, I, I also want to try painting with oils at some point, that's something I've never really done. I think I've done it maybe like once in high school for an assignment or something, but it's largely a medium that's pretty foreign to me and that's something I definitely want to try. But yeah, so 
this is pretty much the end of uh, this particular drawing and I did want to point out to you guys that I'm it's a little hard for me to talk about the process because it's it's pretty much the same for most of my drawings so I think I'm not going to be doing a whole lot of these types of videos going forward I like talking about specific topics uh, in more detail rather than trying to go over the whole process in one go but i still hope you enjoyed watching this video and i hope you found something useful in it and please leave a comment down below with suggestions for things you want to hear me talk about or any questions you might have because i would really love to do a q a video at some point and i'd like to start gathering some questions so i can think on them and i would love to give you guys any advice that you might be seeking for your art related problems because I do feel like at this point I do have quite a bit of experience when it comes to these things so yeah thank you guys so much for watching and I am looking forward to making new videos thank you so much for such a positive response to my sketchbook tour video I have a ton of sketchbooks over the years so I'm definitely planning to do more of those and I will see you guys soon bye